What's going on everyone, it's Rifle here, and thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you one of the builds you can make to have some serious damage output, especially against the Queen. I'm talking easily 3,000 up to 5,000 damage, and then on top of that, adding the perk card Ninja, and doing additional three times that, so you can potentially do more than 10,000 damage in one hit easily, if you are successful at this. As you can see here, in case you don't know about the perk card called Ninja, sneak attacks with melee weapons do three times normal damage. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you an absolutely insane melee build. Don't get me wrong, there is another build that I can show you that can do just as much damage that I'm about to be showing you. I mean, check this out. That is an insane amount of damage. But this melee build is stronger just because of this ninja perk card. This perk is extremely useful and for some reason highly underlooked. Of course there are other builds out there which I may go over in the future, but for now I'm going to be going over this one because it's one of the strongest ones that I know of so far. If you find this enjoyable, consider leaving a like, that's always greatly appreciated everyone. And hey, maybe if you're new here, stick around, subscribe, and if you don't like what you see in the future, you know, just simply unsubscribe. Okay, so anyways, to start this off, I'll be going over the perk cards for this insane melee build. So you will be wanting the slugger cards. So the regular slugger, the expert slugger, and the master slugger. This will increase your two-handed melee damage by a total of 60% if you have them all maxed. You will also want to invest in block or martial artist. Martial artist will allow you to deal more damage over time and blocker will help you live over time. I mean, hey, if you can, invest in both of them and try to max them out. Also, keep in mind to invest into the incisor perk card too. This will ignore your target's armor by 50% with a melee weapon. The perception category doesn't require anything really for this build. You can, however, invest into glow sight if you want though. For endurance, two of one of the most important perk cards for this build to invest in is Radcool for one. This will give you more damage the higher your radiation is. I know a lot of you were wondering in my past videos why my radiation was so high and you were telling me to use Radaways. Well, this is the reason why it was so high. The more radiation that I have, the higher my damage output's gonna be. Also, the other perk card is Revenant. This is probably one of the most broken cards if pulled off correctly. Of course, this is going to take some communication and coordination. The player that will be doing the serious damage will have to get down somehow, whether by killing themselves or letting the enemies take them out. Once they are down, then they'll have to be revived, and if pulled off correctly, this can increase 50% extra damage, which, it's just insane if you think about it. Literally three different slugger perk cards maxed gives you 60%. But just this one perk card can give you up to 50%. So yeah, once again, if this is pulled off at the right timing in a fight, you can really do some damage against your opponent. Like more than likely take them out in one hit. Just really depends on what you're going up against. I mean, as you can see, this Scorch Beast died in two hits. And also keep in mind the full build wasn't made quite yet, as you can see with the damage on the bloodied fire axe. You're definitely able to one hit Scorch Beast with this build fully active, for a fact, easily. If you're able to do this much damage to a Scorch Beast with a little over a thousand damage, you're definitely gonna be able to one hit a Scorch Beast with something like this, plus a sneak attack. Oh my gosh, it would be swatted like a fly. I mean, check out this damage. This is from one hit on a level 80 Scorch Beast. Okay, so next up for the Charisma category perk cards, so I suggest investing into Tenderizer. This is a great perk to do even more damage. As you can see, you can make your target receive more damage after you attack it. And once you get this maxed, you can make your target receive 7% more damage for 10 seconds. Now, that's pretty awesome. Also keep in mind to check out Strange in Numbers because with this build that I'm going to be showing you, it also involves mutations. Now, if you're not going to be using the mutation part of this build, that's okay, then you don't have to worry about this perk card. But I am going to be showing a bonus to be able to do even more damage. I'll be going over that after I get through this perk card setup. As for the intelligence category, you want to invest into Nerd Rage, definitely. Having low HP, you will see, is very important for this build to do just insane game-breaking damage. What Nerd Rage does is below 20% health, you will gain 40 damage resistance, plus 20% more damage, and 15% toward your action point regeneration. It's 
honestly one of the best perks to have in my opinion especially for this build i should say also keep in mind to invest into makeshift warrior for overall better long lasting melee weapons Next up, in agility, you want to be sure to check out Adrenaline. If you use this at the right time, you can shred the Scorched Beast Queen extremely fast. As you can see, you gain 10% extra damage after each kill, and can max out at 60% extra damage. And keep in mind, this lasts up to 30 seconds, and the good thing is the 30 second duration refreshes each time you get a kill. So if you can get this at max 60%, you'll be doing way more damage than what I showed previously with the Bloodied Fire Axe. As you can see, this melee build is nearly peaking at 4k. But don't get me wrong whatsoever, that's just scratching the surface. If you are able to proc all of these perk cards within this setup, you'll be doing an insane amount of damage, especially if you are able to sneak attack your opponent. You'll be doing over 10,000 damage, not even over exaggerating. Over freaking 10,000 damage in one hit, which that was the next perk card that I was going to tell you to invest in definitely if you want to do an insane amount of damage is the ninja perk card. You can literally triple the amount that you are doing. You just have to be able to pull it off right. Now something else that can go with the ninja perk is the sneak perk. That makes it harder for you to be detected while you are sneaking. So you're going to be able to pull off the sneak attack easier with that perk card equipped. Okay, so last up I have for you the category Luck. And what you want to invest in in this one is first off, Bloody Mess. This will give you 15% bonus damage. Serendipity. This will gain you a 45% chance to avoid damage while being below 30% health. Once again, that is basically what this build revolves around, having low health to do some serious damage. And lastly though, you want to invest in Starch Genes. The reason why is because this will help you keep your mutations just in case, because they can be a pain to get, which is actually what I'll be going over next in this build, since we are now finally finished with all the perk cards. Whew. Okay, anyways, if you got confused with any of this whatsoever, just feel free to rewind, you know, that's the power of videos. Let's go ahead and get on to this next part though. As for the mutations that you want, starting off with one of the most important ones, Adrenal Reaction. As you can see, this will increase your weapon damage when you have low health points. Once again, revolving around having low health. So think about it for a second. Let's go back to all the perk cards that involved having low health. The Radical, the greater your radiation, the greater your strength. Nerd Rage, while below 20% health, you gain 40 damage resistance, plus 20% damage, and plus 15% action point regeneration. And then we have Serendipity, while below 30% health, gain a 45% chance to avoid damage. And we can't forget about the weapon that we're using, a bloodied effect weapon, which that gains you even more additional damage the lower your health. So it's just insane how much is working together here when you do have low health. I will say it can be a risky build because you can have a chance at dying more often, but it's definitely powerful. All I'm saying is the adrenal reaction on top of all the other things that benefit you having low hit points is definitely not a bad thing to invest time to try to get for this build. Also another one to look out for is Twisted Muscles. This will increase your damage by 25% and also increase your chances of crippling your enemies but it does lower your gun accuracy by negative 50%. But, you know, this is a melee build, so gun accuracy isn't important whatsoever. Now, for the bonus mutations that aren't as important, but, you know, can be useful to have, starting off with Speed Demon, this will increase your reload speed and also increase your move speed. You know, of course, the reload speed isn't important whatsoever for this build, but that move speed is. Next up, I have for you the Marsupial, which is just fun to have, period. This just increases your jump height and also increases your carry weight by a good amount. But it does lower your intelligence, I will say. But once again, it's just fun to have because it increases your jump height by so much. And lastly, I have for you the Electrical Charge. This has a chance to shock melee attackers. So... You know, that's always fun. But, yeah, that's it for the mutations. Now, for the weapon, as I was showing you previously, it is a bloodied fire axe. And what the bloodied effect does for the fire axe, it increases the damage the lower your hit points are. Like I was mentioning before, this build does revolve around having low hit points, and not to mention high radiation. But I'm telling you, if you pull this off correctly, you can easily be doing some high damage. 
Also, be sure to be hot king, buff out, psycho tats, psychos. You get the point. Those kind of medical supplies that will increase your damage. You want to be using those swiftly on the battlefield. As you can see here, they are used as a hot key. But yeah, that's about wrapping up this video, everyone. Hopefully, you found this enjoyable. This took a long time to put together, but I thought it'd be worth it to show you all a very good build to use against the Scorch Beast Queen because I know she can be kind of a pain, and I'm telling you, this build works great. Great. And I'm telling you, this build works greatly. Now, you don't necessarily need a bloodied weapon. You can just use the perk card setup, but a bloodied effect weapon goes great with this build. All in all, it's something to try out. Maybe switch up a few perk cards here and there and see how you do overall. I'm out of here, though, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. And if you did find this enjoyable, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like. That's always greatly appreciated. Like I said, this took a while to put together. Also, hey, if you're new around here, consider giving my channel a chance by subscribing. And if you don't like what you see in the future, just simply unsubscribe. It would be much appreciated to have you on board. I'm out of here, though. Peace.